at this point of time we unite our hearts in prayer with those around the world now suffering restless and in agony because of the present situation just spend a few moments for that we may not be able to reach out to them physically but let our hearts be reaching out to them in prayer that the spirit of the lord take control over the situation the way they think they react and respond to this crisis that has gripped the whole world at the same time with the confidence we declare to ourselves the word of god that tells us in the psalm blessed be our god who sustains us with his mercy each day so wonderfully may this word of god become a reality each moment each day for every person in the world brothers and sisters we are witnessing and experiencing an interruption in the journey of our life many feel either through their conversation or any other expression something is permitted that is not in our plan and who permitted it and then again people feel a deviation has come that does not match the script of the plans that we were preparing or we had prepared it could be concerning the wealth or job or future plans in any level in the material level in social level in the physical level and in any other manner it has compelled us the present situation to have a change of lifestyle and this change has become very painful too there is a waiting in agony all these things we are experiencing the question is this as a believer in god what difference this interruption this health scare should bring to our mind what difference should be there in those who believe what's the difference those who do not believe face it those who believe face it they may have to there is no exception situations come to that level whereby whether you believe it or not whether you are believer of god or whether you belong to a different religion or maybe different ideological concept we have to face it then what's the difference we should experience the difference is only this perhaps this is an interruption and you know the dictionary defines interruption in this manner something that thwarts hinders and breaks the uniformity this is a reality experience in every level in any level too we are speaking about the difference the interruption how do we see it it is here we understand the word of god brings the clear understanding in the light of the power of the holy spirit given to each one of us we understand this interruption is an intervention of god it's not easy why because what the eyes see around is not comfortable we hear many things in the newspaper and through the television and other means what we hear is very distressing we don't see beyond that and the heart analyzes many things and the result may be the sadness may be the anxiety the terrible worry or frustration or panic 
At the same time, we comfort each other. Those who feel strong, they comfort the other. And it is in this situation that we understand what does the Holy Spirit do? He makes us understand things beyond what we see, what we hear and what we normally understand. Understanding beyond human understanding. Which would mean, yes, there is interruption. Interruption has taken place in the journey of the life of man. But then, it is an intervention of God for those who believe it. And what is the effect? To be in fellowship with the one. Not simply in the peripheral spiritual life, but rather, or just some pious life, in the practical reality of daily life, the heart in fellowship, in the midst of all these things, the heart in fellowship with the one who will turn everything for the good of those who love him. It's very interesting to see a number of characters in the Bible who face interruptions. Interruptions need not be always very comfortable. Sometimes it's very, very painful, demanding a lot of other things beyond the set plan. Let's go through some of these characters so that we shall know what we shall be experiencing within the heart, though externally things are different. We have Noah in the Holy Bible. Interrupted, but how? Very comfortable in his obscurity and then snatched away from that obscurity, very comfortable obscurity, to a very discomfortable challenges of life to build a boat structure which he could never imagine or which he never even heard. If not for this, he would be just a man in the annals of history, just dead and gone. But what a difference it made. And that is way the power of the spirit that makes you go beyond what we see, what we understand. In fact, as I share this with you, I remember Jonathan Seft writing it this way. He wrote in his book a particular sentence with a picture of a cloud. And the writing goes this way. The cloud does not know why it moves and where it moves. Or it need not know even. The cloud does not know why it moves and where it moves. It need not know even, but the sky above knows it. The sky above knows it. And that is what the Spirit of God will make us understand. The trust in the Lord, that will make us understand. Definitely, there is an intervention of God. It is in that hope that we live in the present times. Let's come to another person called Abraham again interrupted from his normal life or in his normal life. He was commanded by God to leave his friends and family and embark on a very adventurous journey with a few directions. That is very surprising. Not every detailed description or direction. A man was told to leave his family and his kin and as we said, with the very few directions. Finally, through that adventurous journey, trusting in God, not asking why or what or how or when maybe, ends up with a covenant which God established. And that is what we see in the character of Abraham. Another character, Sarah. What a great surprise. As we understand the zero ground of her age where she cannot produce children, and the greatest of all surprises to her, she bore a child. Again, we have Moses in the desert, lost everything, all the palace culture where he was trained in palace mentality, perhaps was brought up now, lost in the desert, completely lost. From palace to the desert, 
absolutely nothing of the palace and palace training or palace culture. And they, the Lord reveals himself so powerfully than ever at all. And that is what we understand, seeing things beyond what we experience and what we see. Joseph of the Old Testament, another character, how he snatched away, how the deviation took place in his life that totally could not match the script perhaps he had prepared in his mind to be in fellowship, to be enjoying the comfort of his brothers. And as he was hanging around his brothers, snatched away and then sold as a slave, put it in the pit and then in the house of Potiphar, misunderstood in the prison. But then the one above knows how things can be made into something better. Interruptions are actually for those who believe in the power of the Holy Spirit depend on that. Interruptions are intervention of God laying a foundation for something better which perhaps we not understand immediately but that is a fact. That's the message. That's the good news. We have the disciples again coming to the zero ground. They left everything and followed Jesus. Finally, what they believed is, has become a question for them. And that is the way they are overcome by the Holy Spirit. As we said earlier, thrown to new challenges of life, but then not alone with the power of the Holy Spirit. We mentioned these characters in the Bible, just a few of them, to know the fact as we face the present circumstance that is not very encouraging, but there is something that can happen, not externally maybe, within the heart. The heart shall be linked with the power from above. I am reminded of the word of St. Paul in the letter to Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. If not in the very exact word that he mentions, but the reality is faced by all of us. In the first part of that sentence, Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be unaware of the terrible sufferings that we went through. There were times we felt utterly hopeless. There were times we carried the sentence of death within our body. As you listen to this word of God, I'm sure within your heart when we think of the present situation and we hear the news around, this is exactly that all of us would feel. Terrible sufferings that we go through. Feeling hopeless and thoroughly discouraged. But then the next sentence is something very wonderful. All these things happened so that we may not rely on our own power. The world will tell us. Man is trying his level best to rely on his power. Doesn't succeed. He's getting defeated. All these things happened an interruption, yes, but for intervention, that's more important. Interruption in the ordinary understanding, but intervention in the light of God's understanding with the Holy Spirit will reveal. And therefore, St. Paul tells us, all these things happen so that we may not rely on our own power, but rather we may rely on the power of him who raised Jesus from the dead. And this is the anointing that we shall experience. When we say anointing, very often it takes to be that the manifestation of many other things. But in the present times, let's know something. I'm reminded of a, a particular man who wrote something about Christmas tree. Just a short sentence he wrote about it. 
What is the difference between a Christmas tree and a fruit tree? And he writes, a Christmas tree under which a lot of people gather around because it's very glittering, the bells hung on it, tied on it, and is guarded in decoration tied on it. And people enjoy it. But then, a time will come, people will rush towards a tree that bears fruit for the fruit. And this is the time. Brothers and sisters, from all the external manifestation of anointing or maybe other things that we were running around, this crisis makes us run towards fruit tree. And what is a fruit tree? The Spirit of God. Beyond the external manifestation, within the heart, the Spirit at work. And it is here that we understand the cloud does not know where it moves and why it moves, but the sky above knows it. Another thought that comes to my mind, may I share with you. You know, a child that fails the exam needs to worry if only there is no provision made by the authorities to make him right again. I should be upset over something that broke in as much as there is no provision made to repair it. The wonderful thing that we read in the Bible about the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the anointing is the fact there is a provision made by God in the weakness of man. Imagine this time of COVID, spreading of COVID. If there is no provision made by the health authorities and government authorities to manage it or to come to the rescue of people, then everyone would be so desperate. But in their own capacity, in their own way, they are somehow making provisions the best possible way. And that is the comfort we receive. And therefore, it is the truth that we need to realize. If there is no provision made in times of weakness, in times of helplessness, that is a real tragedy. And the Bible tells us in our utter helplessness, in our utter confusion, in our lack of understanding, all these are weaknesses and limitations. There is a provision. And that provision is the Holy Spirit. He makes us understand things beyond our human understanding. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. As I share this with you, perhaps many of you would know the different ways the helplessness of man is expressed. All of them are mentioned Greek words. But however, let's know in the way we need to understand it other than the Greek words. They categorize into five ways. Or five ways they are categorized. One, imagine you're sick. A terminal illness. Utterly helpless. Nothing can be done. Medical science is helpless. Others are helpless. And you're totally helpless. This need not be to a sickness alone, a situation where we feel utterly helpless. That's one kind of weakness or limitation that man goes through. It could be regarding finance, it could be regarding relationship, it could be family life, it could be married life, it could be a job, it could be anything at all. Nothing can be done, no one can do anything, no one can intervene in that situation to lift you up. The second, everything is all right, but one particular weakness grips you and you cannot overcome that weakness or limitation and you're crippled by that. You cannot function the way you should function. Generally, things are all right. Generally, things appear to be all right. But yet, something you know Perhaps others know or need not know a particular limitation in something drags you and pulls you 
and though you have other things with you, well, you cannot function properly the way you should function. And the third type, the helpless of man or limitation is put in this manner. Lot of problems, one after another, and you're confused. You don't know what to do. You cannot prioritize which one you should tackle first because you feel totally in confusion. Which you want to tackle first? All around there are problems. And you cannot put your hand to something so that you could start with. You're confused. And because of this confusion and a lot of problems surrounding you in many ways, you cannot do anything. You simply remain passive because you can't do anything. You don't feel like doing anything. And the next one, they say, is like a scourging. The simple example could be like a child beaten by the teacher or anyone. Maybe the child receives the beating on the hand. Immediately the child manages it by rubbing the hand. And while he manages that and feels comfortable, he gets it on the back. The hands move towards the back and rubs there and then he feels comfortable. By the time he feels very comfortable, he gets it onto the shoulder. He manages it, but not free. He's not free. And therefore, that could be a helplessness or situation man goes through weakness because somehow he's managing, but not free. He's not comfortable. Managing it, yes. And the next one, they say, like a man in a sleepy mood, which would mean he can see things in a sleepy mood, but does not arouse him to do something about it. He's aware of things happening, but nothing in him makes him really move and do something about it. These are the ways regarding any situation man feels helpless. And it is here we need to know the promise or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And it is this promise that we hold on to particularly in these moments of crisis. Some would wonder, is really a pious way of saying it? No. The doctors need the Spirit of God for diagnosing it. The authorities of the government need to have the Spirit of God so that they will know what direction should be given, what rules should be made, how to contain a situation. In any level, we need this anointing. Otherwise, things would be taken a different manner altogether because we are all helpless in one way or the other. And remember, in our helplessness, the provision made by God in his love and mercy is this, the power of the Holy Spirit to act effectively in a situation. So two things come over here. One, the interruption is actually laying a foundation for something better by the power of the Holy Spirit. And to understand that it is an intervention of God, not just interruption to destroy you. That understanding is given by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we depend on him. There were times, as St. Paul said, we are defeated. But then that is to make us rely on the power of him who raised Jesus from the dead. And then, deep within our heart, as we move in this situation within our heart, the realization, the spirit is a plan of God made in our weaknesses. A plan of God focused on our weaknesses. May these two thoughts comfort us. And as we live a life these days in particular, surrounded by the problems of the world, particularly the sickness, we pray, Lord, govern me by your Spirit. Govern my neighbors by your Holy Spirit. Govern all those whom I think of with your Holy Spirit, the whole world 
and the people the authority with the holy spirit we are helpless we are struggling we don't openly say that but lord we lift up to you the struggle today the man is going through but in this struggle you give us the anointing of the power of the holy spirit the power from above we trust in you because we have the right to demand of you as children as you are the father 